Hello, Hello PHS. PHS. I am Taya Saracini here with Andy Blazinski, and we are proud to present to you the 20th episode of Cougar Media News. The school board makes a lot of decisions regarding the education of the students at PHS. An important topic that was discussed at the school board meeting on February 22nd is a one-to-one -one initiative that may take place next year. Next year, the school district may buy more than 1,200 new MacBook Air laptops in order to give one to each of the students in grades 9 through 12. Mrs. McCarthy gave us more information about the advantages of going one-to-one. The benefit one -to -one. of the one-to-one -one is you don't have to worry about technology, getting technology into the classroom. The technology will already be there um, so that every student could be on the same platform at the same time. So they'd all be getting the same material. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of teachers who already have um, used technology daily in their classroom. So, um, but for the class, like for health class, there would be some things that we would be doing that we don't currently do. At the school board meeting on February 22nd, a few staff members spoke about their experiences with our current computer situation within the high school. Mrs. Thomas expressed her frustrations with the technology when assisting students in the library. Mr. Hofsass addressed the hardware issues because of multiple students continuously logging in in a shared environment. He mentioned how it results in a change or delay in instruction. We're moving towards the 21st century trying to make sure that we have the best technology and the best education that we can give to you because you're our, we'll say, clientele. You're the this is Taya Saracini for. reporting for Cougar Media News. Stay tuned for more updates about the one-to-one -one initiative in our next upcoming episodes. The students in STEM club are starting to prepare for their yearly competitions. Taylor spoke to a few of the members to find out the details about what it takes to be a part of STEM. On March 2nd, members of STEM club will compete in the first competition in order to try and reach The down. STEM and team, so the STEM club kind of consists of a bunch of uh, a variety of different competitions and teams. Um, like the Science Olympiad, there are some math teams, and then teams itself is one of the ones that uh, I focus on with some of the students. Um, it's a competition, uh, a science-related competition that has a different topic or focus every year. Um, last year we only got 35 right, but that still won the competition. That just uh, shows how difficult it really is. Um, the competition this Friday is in our library here at the high school. We have, we have several teams here. Um, and the, the, the day consists of a written test. That's a lot of conceptual questions in mathematics and science. And then the second half of the day will be a, a build competition and the students don't know what the build is yet, so they find that out the day of the test. Uh, so we have to wait around to see how they do on the state level, and if they do well enough compared to some of the other teams in the state, then they advance to the national competition, which is being held in, I believe, Atlanta, Georgia this year. If we do well on Friday, uh, we will advance to be potentially in the national competition. Uh, we've been surprisingly good. We have a good track record. Uh, a lot of our teams have made uh, nationals every year, Last year was in Orlando, Florida. It was a lot of fun. Um, and typically we go down to wherever the site uh, of the competition is held, and then they compete in the same similar style of test where you have a conceptual section and then a build section. And, um, this is Taylor McInerney reporting for Cougar Media News. Good luck to all the members of STEM Club as they advance in their competitions, and good luck to all students participating in the team's competition today. Just a reminder, we have off school Friday, March 9th, and Monday, March 12th. Opening night for the spring musical, Cinderella, is on Thursday, March 8th at 7 p.m. Good luck to all the actors and actresses. We can't wait for your performance. Many of the students here at PHS do interesting things outside of school. One student in particular has started his own clothing company and works as a manager for upcoming artists. Let's take a look. What is Plug Society? Plug Society is a Twitter page, um, online music blog, as well as event curation service. Plug Society was created to help find new music and give growing artists a platform to grow. Right now we had 90,000 website users in 2017 and we average around 1 million to 2 million Twitter impressions a month. So our main goal is to just give smaller artists a platform to grow and it's just a place for people to find new music and learn about what's happening in the music industry. When did you become associated? I joined Plug Society as a writer in the beginning of the school year and then a few months ago I got promoted to project manager. What do you do as a project manager? Um, as a project manager I help out with concerts. Right now we've done four events in Philadelphia 
and I also help on all of our projects right now that we're working to launch that aren't out yet. So I started No Chill around the winter of my eighth grade year. Um, it was uh, heavily inspired from Golf Wang, Legal Civilization, as well as Ransom Globe Brand. And uh, I came out with my first designs. I think the first line dropped in December of 2016. And then I've dropped three lines since then. How many states are you in? No Chill's in approximately 15 states. Some of that comes from people I've met through Plug Society who bought stuff, um, artists, YouTubers, and influencers who have sent stuff to, as well as just random uh, orders I've gotten from influencer marketing. You're in 15 states? About. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Go check out some of Justin's new products at nochillclothing.bigcartel.com. Are you feeling lucky? Check your school email after today's broadcast for a St. Patrick's Day questionnaire all about Career Media News. Just respond to Mrs. Stroh's email with the correct answers to the questions to be entered for the chance to win a $10 gift card from Sheets. The deadline is March 9th to respond with your answers. Two lucky winners will be announced on our March 16th episode. Don't forget to enter. That's it for this week, PHS. And remember, only eight more sleeps until the SATs.